Okay, hi, hello, How, hi everyone. My name is Joseph Mushiri, and I'm a lecturer in the School of Public Health, teaching community health. Welcome to MBPH 700 Community Health. This is a unit that is taught to the students in the School of Public Health and in the School of Medicine. Our topic today is community diagnosis, and our learning objectives are as follows. Um, the first objective is to define the term community diagnosis and then the second objective is to describe the goals of uh, conducting community diagnosis then the third objective is that the student should be able to explain the process of conducting community diagnosis uh, objective number four is that the student should be able to describe the indicators that are used in community diagnosis Number five is that they should be able to identify the constraints that are associated with community diagnosis. And finally, we, the student should be able to um, explain the <coughs> components of community diagnosis report. The rationale of conducting community diagnosis is that we want to understand how to work with the community you want to understand the community that you are working with in terms of health issues and so it is important that you have some sort of a background check on what needs to uh, be done um, in terms of the health needs that they have and this is done in the community diagnosis um, there are a few definitions of community diagnosis but Today we are going to look at the definition by WHO and it defines community diagnosis as a quantitative and qualitative description of health of citizens and the factors which influence the health, their health. It identifies the problem, proposes the areas of, um, of improvement and of course stimulates um, the action. Um, in terms of identification of, of health issues, this entails things like uh, diseases and uh, issues that relate to health of an individual. And this will be looking at things like um, availability of water, uh, good sanitation, good food supply, mental health issues, etc., etc. At the same time, when we do community diagnosis, we look at the correlates of uh, community health, and these correlates are actually the factors that influence health. Um, if you look at the health of an individual, it's basically influenced by many things, and these are what we refer to as correlates. Um, and of course, we can give some few examples. The culture that people come in, we know that uh, culture our cultural beliefs are associated with um, our health behavior. Then we also know um, that the physical environment that we live in can influence whether we are health or, or not. At the same time, the incomes and so on and so forth. So community diagnosis entails identification of those needs and their correlates. Other individuals um, at the same time um, have come up with other definitions that looks at community diagnosis both as a process and as a product. And when we talk about community diagnosis as a process, we look at the process uh, that entails the following. One, gathering the, uh, the information, the data from individuals in the community, interpreting it, and of course, getting that particular information to be able to prioritize health needs. Of course, we'll be looking at this uh, idea of uh, prioritizing of health needs uh, a little bit earlier. Um, because ordinarily, when you get to a community, you get a lot of health needs. And because as community health workers, we work in a situation where we have limited resources, it is therefore means that we'll need to prioritize some few um, and health needs of others. Of course, prioritization means you have some needs coming earlier than others and so on and so forth. And we'll be looking at how that one is done. Number C, it's actually the development of intervention strategies. The idea is that once you have the information 
about the community, then it is possible for you to design interventions that goes to that. Then, of course, after you have implemented the intervention, you'll be able to, you need to uh, conduct evaluation to know whether you're achieving your goal or your goals or not. When community diagnosis is looked as a product, it is actually the community diagnosis report itself. Um, the report that is uh, consumed by the stakeholders in the community health. Then we have the future plan. Um, it is the strategy that have been put into place that will be taking, um, will be done later in time. Let's look at the, so in the, the community um, diagnosis is actually a theoretical framework that uh, helps to understand how you intervene in the community. And this particular theoretical framework looks at how do you determine the health needs. And then based on the information that you get in that particular evaluation, you prioritize those health needs, then you design interventions, and then you will need to implement. And of course, during, uh, during the implementation, you will need to monitor and evaluate uh, those, health, uh, those health interventions. And so the two types of community diagnosis, one is of course the comprehensive community diagnosis, which is um, a community diagnosis that looks at the general health needs of a community. And this, what happens is that you look at all the aspects of health needs and of course the accolades and then you do the um, you do the, the the report then there is a problem problem oriented uh, community diagnosis this is oriented towards uh, responding to a particular health problem for example uh, currently we are dealing with covid 19 and we would want to know the level of community preparedness in terms of how they're able to uh, cope with this particular pandemic. And so we will go into the community, look at, look at the, the level of preparedness, and so we will ask questions that are right, uh, directly linked to COVID-19 in this particular communities. Um, generally, the goals of conducting community diagnosis are as follows. Number one, we need to analyze the health status of a community. And the idea is that just like we can have one sick person and another well person, it is also possible that you have a community that is sick. And um, based on the several parameters that we call indicators, we'll be looking at that uh, a little bit earlier, you will be able to measure that and uh, we will be able to tell us the status of health of that particular uh, community. The second uh, um, objective, the second goal of community diagnosis is establishing health needs. And so we're saying we will reach all the health needs that exist in the community so that we can have a basis of uh, prioritizing and of course a basis of intervening. Um, number three is to identify priorities. Um, of course, health needs will be many, and so what we need to do is to look at how, which needs needs to be addressed first, and uh, which needs to come uh, later. And of course, that one will be based on many things. We'll be looking short uh, at that particular uh, uh, thing uh, later in some slides down. The fourth uh, goal is to determine the course of actions um, to improve the health status of the community. The information that we get from the community uh, informs the strategies that we must have. Uh, so we will use that particular information to design interve interventions that can be used in the community. Then the next is to evaluate health resources, health services, and assistance within the community. Um, the thing is that we will need to identify those resources that exist and be able to know whether they are working. Um, and this can only be done by an objective assessment. The whole idea is that every time you go into a community, you get to a community, the thing is that there are always other people who have been working with the community before.
Uh, so it is important for you to be able to evaluate the resources that they have and whether those resources are working so that you can know whether you probably need to do your own resources or you can be able to improve the existing resources in the community. Then uh, number six is to assess the attitudes uh, and of course the practices that exist in the community in, the res in respect to community health. Um, the issue is that people's attitude and uh, perceptions greatly influences whether a particular health intervention works or not. And so the thing is that you probably will need to understand those attitudes so that you can know how to be able to uh, uh, intervene. The last goal is to establish the epidemiologic uh, baseline. And the thing is that um, if you start working in a community and you do not have a platform upon which you can be able to gauge yourself whether you achieved or you didn't, then what will happen is that you will not know whether you achieved by the end of the, of course, the, the, the program period or you didn't. So one of the objectives for community diagnosis is you have some data that you can be able to calculate some, of course, uh, percentages of, uh, of, of a particular health problem, and then you intervene up, up, after that, you'll be able to determine whether you achieved anything or you didn't. The thing is, um, and I think I can give an example of that, um, if you started in a community where HIV prevalence is about 11%, and you didn't measure yourself that the, actually the prevalence was uh, 11%, what will happen is that you, by, you, when you learn the, the program for three years, you will not be able, to, be able to know whether you achieved or not. But if you started at 11% and you documented that, that you started at 11%, you learn a health uh, program uh, for HIV intervention for the three years, then after that you'll be able to determine the current prevalence. And so if you find, for example, you are at 5%, then you'll say that I've achieved the initial um, uh, prevalence rate was at 11%. Now I'm at 5% uh, uh, or 3% and so on and so forth. Let's look at the steps in conducting community diagnosis. One, it starts, the step uh, one is actually conducting a weed shield um, a tour. And a weed shield tour is basically an informal survey in a nutshell. And it involves you walking or driving into the community that you want to work with. And the reason why you need to do that is because you need to familiarize yourself with the community and uh, you need to understand the uh, kind of population they will be working with and uh, you will observe uh, several things. Number one, of course, you observe the geographical features that, um, that goes to uh, the, 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 that particular community live in. Then you look at the uh, type of residential areas available infrastructures in terms of roads and uh, uh, rivers and anything else that you need to, to do. Step number two involves um, initiation. And during the initiation, what you need to do is basically um, you set up a committee uh, that we call uh, a working group. Now, this particular committee must um, compose of everyone in the community all the stakeholders working in the sector of health or who are related, um, who, who do anything that can influence the people's health. And that means this, that you will have health workers, you will have laymen, you will have administrators, you will have the individual population uh, members, and so on and so forth. The reason is that if you don't do it, um, you don't include everybody in this particular committee, then you'll find it a little bit different, uh, difficult for you to be able to work in this particular committee. The, in this particular committee. Then the second um, step is a uh, correction of the secondary data. Now, the secondary data involves uh, data that have already been documented by the community or by other stakeholders working with the community. And uh, the reason why you need to correct the secondary data 
is because you want to understand the community in terms of their uh, history, uh, in terms of how did they, how did it develop to the current community, um, and so you would want to also have other issues like uh, health issues that have been documented before, so that you know where to to start with this particular community. At the same time, you would also want to ascertain uh, resources that are available in the community. The ordinary will be existing in some document that you can be able to access. The, the fourth step is the collection of primary data. And two types of data are collected. You collect the, um, the, the qualitative data, and then you collect the, prima, the, the quantitative data. For qualitative data, you can use interviews or focus group discussions. Um, of course, when you have the key informant interviews, you correct, um, you get um, the stakeholders, the key stakeholders in the health sector in the community, and then interview them. Then you can uh, have focus group discussions uh, with relevant members of the community so that you can be able to understand something different. In terms of the quantitative data, you can use an observation checklist. You can also use a, 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 a structured questionnaire that you can give to the members of the community so that they can be able to respond to, to it. There are some um, practical uh, practicalities that goes to this because, of course, if you collected the primary data in the wrong way, you end up with a biased data. And so we recommend that you use a proper methodology of data correction so that you can come up with unbiased data and that means many things. Number one, you need to have an adequate sample size and of course there are many ways of calculating a sample size. Ordinarily you can use uh, formulas and these formulas uh, take into consideration the heterogeneity or homogeneity of a, uh, of a population and they also look at the uh, levels of accuracy, the, um, the, um, the, the, the size of the population that you're dealing with, and so on and so forth. So there are actually those, um, those uh, formulas that you can be able to, to do. Then you must be able to ensure that you are doing proper sampling. Now, if you do poor sampling, you will end up with a biased data that will not be generalizable to the rest of the community. And that means that the interventions that you design based on that particular data will not be able to work in uh, this particular community. And so you need to be very, very clear about the sampling methods that you are using. Make sure that it is um, uh, touching on all the aspects of the community so that the data that you uh, end up with is actually be able to be generalized. Then the other issue is the quality of the data collection tool. You have, if you have a data collection tool that is poorly designed, it will generate a poor information and of course the interventions that will be based on such information will be poor, will not be uh, applicable to the community and most, of, most likely you will not be able to succeed in this particular community. Then the other practicality is in terms of the quality of data recording. You may have all those other things I've mentioned a little bit earlier, but then you end up with research assistants who do poor recording of data. Again, you end up with a poor data that cannot be used for interventions and therefore you will not be able to work in that particular community. You will not be successful in terms of those interventions. Then um, the, you will need to do appropriate data analysis. Um, ensure that the data analysis that you use can, the method can be able to get the, the, the type of analysis that, it, that, it, that it actually represents the information in unbiased way. Um, some few things about uh, data analysis. Um, remember, the reason why we are generating this particular uh, uh, report, community diagnosis report, is because we want it consumed by individuals who work in the health uh, sector uh, or who have, in a way, influenced the health of a community. And so we want it to be as simple as it can be 
but we also want to be as comprehensive as it can be. So some few things that we need to consider. Number one, of course, um, use uh, comparison, uh, use rates and ratios so that we can be able to compare the data, the, that particular data from this community to uh, another community or the same community uh, historically. Number two, um, if you want to do projections, then you can present the information in terms of trends uh, so that you can be able to see um, the future planning. And I think this is one of the things that we, this is some of the places that we use the epidemiology curves and any other uh, thing. Then you can compare this particular data with the community or other communities or the populations um, uh, with other populations. Always graphical presentations are preferred because they are easy to understand. Now, step six is actually the community diagnosis itself, and it have uh, three things. Um, we would want it to present information on the health data so that after you've collected all that data, is the community ill or is it well? If it is ill, what are the health issues? So you need to document that and of course you prioritize. Then you will also need to uh, look at the determinants um, to give us information on the determinants of health. What correlates of health did you identify in that particular community? And again, you will need to list them and be able to explain that. Then there is the potential of health uh, development in future, you've been able to identify the health needs and then the correlates, and then the, what you need to tell us is what are the areas that we can be able to intervene, because that's basically what we are looking at when you do community diagnosis. And so that means that once you have identified a lot of needs, we say that you need to be able to prioritize Every community will have a very uh, um, an array of health needs, and this needs needs to be prioritized in such a way that you're able to address some first and others uh, later. And so, prioritization can be done on um, based on many things. Number one, is, of course, is the severity of the problem, so that um, there are these those uh, health problems are so severe. And of course, most of the times, those ones will be um, linked with a particular cost. And I have given an example of community, um, our common flu versus cancers. So that if you're dealing with flu, you, in the community you have flus and you have cancers, probably you would want to go for cancers because they are more severe. And of course, they, uh, in terms of cost, they will be uh, more. Then you can prioritize based on the magnitude of the problem. Um, and in the magnitude of the problem, it can be in terms of how many individuals in the community ha have, have that particular need or have that particular disease. One thing that you need to note is that actually, at some point, um, flu may become a prioritized uh, thing if it touches basically every other person in the population. And uh, therefore, it will come earlier than other issues. Then we will prioritize based on whether this particular health need is actually a basis of other problems. And I think a good example of this one is actually water. Whereas in situations whereby we do not have water in a community, then what we need to do, what, what we normally get is actually we have diarrhea conditions. We also have uh, other issues that, uh, that result from that. Then based on community capacities and willingness, availability of resources to meet the health needs and so on and so forth. Um, components of community diagnosis reports. So you'd want you to provide uh, a community report with the following. One of course is the basic in introduction, demographic information, socio cultural aspects, general description, general uh, um, description, knowledge on ad, uh, attitudes and practice, and so on and so forth. Then comes to the issues of uh, dissemination. We say that we're not doing this particular community diagnosis for, uh, for the purpose of, or, 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 or it's not an end on its own. Uh, so 
it will need to be consumed by individuals. And so we need to be able to disseminate in a, in, in a, in a, in a population. And um, we look for the stakeholders so that we can be able to uh, be able to they can be able to take it up and action the 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 report and so we can be able to disseminate that based on many things one of course um, we can go to the meetings we can uh, uh, do presentations in um, forums that are been given by that have been set by community based organizations and other volunteer organizations we have press release and so on and so forth so those are some of the indicators that we can be able to use. We have mortality indicators, morbidity indicators, fertility indicators, um, disability uh, indicators, indicators of nutritional um, nutrition. Then we can have healthcare delivery indicators. We can have utilization indicators, indicators of uh, social and medical, uh, social and mental health among other indicators. So we need to look at the challenges that are, that are associated with community diagnosis. One of the things that we've mentioned earlier is that community diagnosis requires that you involve the community. And that means uh, that only those people who are willing to participate in this particular community diagnosis uh, will give the information. That means that you may end up with a very biased information and therefore if you design that particular intervention based on that information then what you will end up with is a very poor intervention that may not be, be able to be applied in the community. So the thing is um, you will not be able to generalize this particular uh, report to the individuals in the community. So just to summarize what we've learned, number one is that community diagnosis is the basic step before you start any intervention in the community. And you should be able to always involve the community so that community participation is key, then all the stakeholders must be involved. And lastly, is that community diagnosis report is not an act on its own, but rather it is a step to intervention or in terms of health uh, care in the community. Thank you for listening. Thank you. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.